Hello, so we're going to look at this exam question. Evaluate the impact and importance of remittances to economies. So first of all, if we were answering this exam question, we'd start off with a definition of uh, remittances. So define remittances at the very start of our response. OK, and now we should look at the impact and importance of these and how that's going to uh, and how these remittances uh, are going to be of benefit, hopefully, uh, to an economy. So first of all, a remittance is an injection into the circular flow of income. So this money that households are receiving uh, due to the remittances can allow these house, households to uh, spend more. So obviously, if households are going to spend more, uh, there's going to be an increase in consumption. And obviously, with that increase in consumption, we'd expect, therefore, an increase in aggregate demand. And we can represent this on a uh, diagram because we like to use diagrams to support our uh, responses. So if we introduce a diagram here, make sure it's fully labeled. So price level on the y-axis, real GDP on our x-axis. We'll use a Keynesian long run aggregate supply curve, long run aggregate supply, and then we'll do AD, label P, Y, 81, Y1, and we'll just demonstrate, use an arrow to demonstrate that, that will shift and the price levels remain the same at P. So, with remittances, it allows households to spend more because ultimately they have more uh, disposable income uh, now uh, due to receiving the, the remittances and therefore they can spend more. And this is therefore represented by an increase in consumption, which increases aggregate demand. We see AD increase from AD to AD1. We see an extension along the long run aggregate supply curve. And with that extension along the long run supply curve, we see an increase in real GDP uh, from Y to Y1. Obviously, this represents an increase in short run economic growth. And also, it would mean a reduction in unemployment. Uh, due to derived demand for labour. So obviously when the economy is growing, there's a greater demand for labour and therefore unemployment would fall. And what we see here is we see no change in the price level. And the reason why that is, is because the economy is currently operating at spare capacity. Uh, so no change in price level, meaning therefore there's no change in inflation. So obviously, quite clearly, we can see here that obviously uh, remittances can have a positive impact upon an economy. However, there is a there is a danger that the, these remittances increasing consumption may actually lead to demand pull. Uh, inflation so whether it's positive or not depends on where the economy is operating at so we'll introduce our evaluation now here so eval depends on where the economy is operating so if operating at full capacity, what we will see is we will see a very different story. And we can draw this on a diagram here. 
and so we'll go price level real gdp uh we'll put in our long run aggregate supply curve and this time we're going to demonstrate the economy operating close to uh full capacity P, P1 increase <laughs> there. Right, so we've got a diagram here now that we've drawn that quite clearly demonstrates the economy operating at full capacity. So in this scenario, an increase in AD, AD to AD1 due to the increased consumption due to the remittances being received uh, results in a uh, far greater increase in the price level and only a very small increase in real GDP. So there's a small increase in our GDP, Y to Y1, uh, more than proportional. Increase in the price level, P to P1, obviously representing demand pull inflation. And what that could mean is obviously that demand pull inflation could reduce people's real wages. And as a result, we may see rising inequality. So what we've looked at there is we've looked at a positive of uh, remittances and how that can obviously increase consumption with the economy which and obviously how that can be beneficial with regards to economic growth and reduced unemployment but we were considering in this scenario that we were operating at spare capacity however if the economy if the economy was operating close to full capacity obviously this increased spending this increased consumption would cause a uh, would cause large amounts of demand pull inflation which may reduce real wages and therefore cause a rise in inequality and obviously therefore show that remittances aren't necessarily always be going to be uh, beneficial. So let's consider some other positive points that we may wish to talk about. So we'll just uh, box off this point that we've just been talking about and the evaluation that is associated with it so we don't get confused uh, when we look at some other points. So, the remittances could also uh, allow families uh, to send their child uh, to school because they have a sufficient funds to pay for education or they have sufficient funds to uh, cover the daily costs and therefore the children, unfortunately, therefore, uh, fortunately, don't have to uh, work anymore. Because uh, obviously it's a sorry state in some societies that children do have to go to work uh, in order to sustain the, the the family so obviously receiving these remittances may mean that fortunately children do not have to uh, go to work any anymore so uh remittances used to send children to school so obviously sending to children to school is going to increase their human capital because they're going to have a far uh, greater understanding of the world. Uh, they're going to have gain qualifications, for example, uh, and, and ultimately gain skills which are going to improve uh, their, their, uh, their productive potential. So improve human capital. Uh, so therefore we're going to have an increased quality uh, of labour and obviously that increased quality of labour is therefore going to increase the productive potential of the uh, economy and as a result that would increase the long run aggregate supply curve and we can demonstrate that on a diagram so we've got price level on our diagram we've got real GDP and we've got our long run aggregate supply curve. We'll add in an aggregate demand curve there. And we can add in a new long run aggregate supply curve, LRAS1. We'll just draw an arrow to show that movement outwards. P, 
P1 reduction in the price level. Uh, why? Why won't? So, and we can just explain what's happened in our diagram there. So, remittances used to spend, uh, used to spend, uh, used to spend. Who used to spend to send? Sorry, that should have been said. You rem use the remitt spend remittances to send the children to school. Use the remitt remittances used to spend to send children to school, improving their human capital. The quality of labour therefore increases, improving the productive potential, and therefore the longer aggregate supply curve uh, would shift outwards. And we just explained that the increase in LRAS from LRAS to LRAS1. What we see is we see a extension along the AD curve. Uh, that extension along the aggregate demand curve is going to lead to a reduction in the price level P to P1. And obviously, therefore, uh, we can talk about that in a moment. Uh, and we can, well, obviously, that would reduce cost push inflation. So that's what we, that's what I want to talk about. So reduce the cost push inflation, uh, and also we see an increase in real GDP. And that's representative Y to Y one, and obviously that's representative of long run economic growth. And there is a reduction in unemployment uh, as labour is uh, this is derived demand for labour. So there's a derived demand for labour and because obviously the economy is growing and therefore unemployment will fall. Uh, so that, that's all well and good with regards, again, the impact and importance of remittances to an economy. However, again, we should evaluate this point. There are issues here with around uh, and whether it's actually going to be beneficial or not. So in order for remittances to be received, obviously, uh, a member of a family, for example, has had to have uh, migrated away from the country of origin. Uh, and as a result, and typically, that person is going to be uh, a skilled labourer because they've been able to obtain a job in another country. So obviously here, we actually the country may actually be receiving the remittances now, but previously they would have lost skilled uh, labourers to another country. And obviously, that's going to have a negative impact on the productive potential of the country who is receiving the remittances. So, uh, skilled workers leave the country to earn abroad. So they earn abroad, these skilled workers. And obviously, these skilled workers are representative of a brain drain. And therefore, obviously, there's a reduction in human... Uh, well, not necessarily a reduction in human capital. There's a reduction in the quality of labour within the country. Reduction of the quality of labour. And obviously, that's going to have a negative impact on the long-run aggregate supply curve. And again, we can demonstrate on a diagram how that would work out. Uh, price level, uh, our GDP. Uh, we've got a long racket supply curve. I did a new one there, LRAS. One, and just drew an arrow going backwards. So that shift inwards, AD. Why, why one? So what we see here, obviously, when the workers left, it would have caused a, de a reduction in the quality of labour within that country and reduced, therefore, the long run aggregate supply curve. Obviously, therefore, the productive potential of the economy has fallen. And what we see is we see a reduction in the long run aggregate supply curve from 
LRAS to LRAS. LRAS1. Uh, and what we see, therefore, is we see a contraction up the aggregate demand curve. We see an increase in the price level P to P1, representing cost uh, push inflation, a rise in cost push inflation. And we see a reduction in real GDP, Y2, Y1. Uh, and as a result of that reduction in real GDP from Y to Y1, we'd see a reduction in economic growth and a rise in unemployment. So what we can see here again, we've seen that remittances can be used to help to send children to school and improve human capital and improve the productive potential of the economy and obviously the benefits that that can have with regards to reduction in cost push inflation, ec long run economic growth and reduction in unemployment. However, in order for remittances to be re received in the first place, skilled workers must have left the country. And obviously when they left the country, that would have reduced the long run aggregate supply curve because obviously those skilled labourers are not being utilised within the their country of origin they're now being used abroad and obviously therefore uh, that's going to have negative impacts on the economic growth and uh, rising unemployment within that particular uh, country so we've looked at two really good well-developed points uh, so far uh, and we're going to have a look at uh, another well-developed point uh, with a counter uh, now as well so just flip over the piece of paper so uh, obviously, with people receiving remittances, uh, there's less uh, less need for government uh, support due to due to hopefully there should be reduced levels of poverty. Uh, within a economy because obviously people are now receiving uh, additional income which they can use and obviously that should help to alleviate uh, elements of, 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 of poverty uh, in particular uh, if it was it should reduce uh, absolute poverty because people should have a sufficient income to uh, to live I wouldn't say necessarily comfortably, but they'd have the basic needs to, uh, to, to live. They'd have a necessary food, water, uh, shelter to live in, for example. So less need for government support due to reduction in poverty. Maybe this in you know, particular a reduction in absolute poverty. Uh, so obviously uh, government uh, can spend resources elsewhere. So the government may wish to spend again on education. It may wish to spend on uh, health care, for example. Uh, so spending on education, for example, obviously, as we saw before, spending on education is uh, very important because obviously spending on education can improve the long run supply curve of an economy because obviously you've got a, a higher quality uh, workforce. However, uh, but but also, uh, obviously, education is a measure or can be used as a measure of economic uh, development. So with more spending on education, maybe more schools, for example, we would expect an increase in the mean number of years of schooling. Uh, also, with more spending on healthcare, you could have more hospitals, for example. And more hospitals should therefore allow more people to be to be treated, and as a result, this should therefore reduce uh, mortality rates, for example. Reduce mortality rates and should increase life expectancy. 
and the elements of increasing the number, mean number of years of schooling and improving life expectancy, well, these are both measures which are included in their human development index. So obviously, if these are increasing, it's going to improve the human development index, and therefore that should lead to economic development. So again, quite clearly, we can see... Uh, that not only does remittances improve economic growth, both in the short run and long run, but it can also achieve economic development, as we've talked about here. However, again, we're going to evaluate this point and we're going to consider some issues that, again, remittances may pose. So obviously, for remittances um, to be received, obviously, the person earning the income abroad has to convert their money that they earn into um the currency uh, from their country of origin to send it back to their family. Obviously, by converting the money that they earn into the currency of their country of origin and where they're going to send their money to, uh, obviously, that's going to increase the demand for that currency and would actually lead to an appreciation of the currency. So, uh, they convert earnings to currency of country of the country of the country of origin in order to send remittances Obviously, this increases the demand for the currency. And what that would mean is it would lead to an appreciation of the currency. And the obviously, the acronym that we know goes with appreciation is SPICED. And obviously, we can talk about some potential negative effects that may occur because of this. So obviously, exports being dearer may see a reduction uh, in export uh, volume and value. And as a result of export volume and value decreasing, there'd be a decrease in aggregate demand. And therefore, we may see a fall in economic growth and also a uh, rise in unemployment. In addition, obviously, imports being cheaper, you may see an increase in volume and value of import. Obviously, the increased volume and value of imports is obviously a uh, withdrawal from the circular flow of income. Uh, and what this would also mean is the increase in M would again mean a decrease in aggregate demand. And obviously, again, you would see a reduction in economic growth and a rise in unemployment. So again, we've quite clearly said that, yes, there are benefits to remittances in this time in particular. We focus upon the economic development uh, that can be achieved by it. But we've also said there may be an appreciation of the uh, currency due to people converting their earnings into the uh, currency of their of origin for them to send them remittances back. And obviously this can have a negative impact upon economic growth obviously due to exports falling and imports rising. So let's just finally sum up with a judgment for our response. So our judgment, we can say that we uh, we could argue that in the short run, remittances are beneficial. And we can argue this with regards to increased consumption, which could increase aggregate demand, for example, um, we can argue that this would also increase uh, amount of education uh, and obviously that can lead to improvements in the long run aggregate supply curve, for example. Uh, and obviously these things that we've talked about can lead to economic growth. However, in the long run... Uh, there are issues with regards to the sustainability uh, with regards to uh, 
uh, remittances issues with regards sustainability basically what we're arguing here is are we going to see these remittances continue long into the future is it just going to be uh, a period of time that we're going to see it for i don't think it's going to last indefinitely issues regards to sustainability uh other government policies may be necessary e.g. Uh, fiscal or monetary policy. And also, one of the issues that we've got with regards to remittances is uh, it doesn't necessarily go to the uh, poorest uh, members of an economy because actually in order for you and um, family member to go and work abroad, you, tend, you really tend to have to have a sufficient amount of money in the first place in order for to be able to go and relocate abroad uh, and then send the money back. So actually the poorest members in society in an economy who may need, who would benefit most from receiving additional income aren't going to be able to have access to it because actually in the first place, because they are a, a, one of the poorest members in, the, in an economy, they aren't going to have the necessary funds to have a family member move abroad in the first place. So there are issues with regards to that as well but no we've had a really good uh, look at remittances and how obviously they can be beneficial but there are particular issues s surrounding them so thank you